When you arrive in a restaurant in France, the first thing they're going to ask you is, voulez-vous un apéritif pour commencer? Which means, would you like to start with a drink? And that can be really intimidating if you don't know what they have or what's on the menu. So in this video, we're meeting up with Antoine's brother, Vincent, who's going to take us to a Parisian bar and show us what are the classics that French people drink so you'll know what to expect, what they taste like, and how to order when you're here in a French restaurant. Allez, on y va. Two centiliters of liquor, put a water on the side, and you can add ice. This is a, a south, the drink of south of France. Okay. Marseille and south of France when the weather is very hot. Okay. okay. So you put a lot of ice cube, and then, yes, one, and two, and then. You know, French people never give you ice. All of a sudden I have ice, I'm a little worried. <laughs> because this is very powerful alcohol, okay? They're gonna get me drunk with one drink. Yes, this so, thing smells like licorice. It's full of alcohol. So strong they gave me ice. Okay. You can you can say only that water or water or water or more unless it depends your taste. Okay. But for, to me, it's better to have a <laughs> more, more more water because if not, this is very strong and you're gonna fall. You know, just like a fly in, in two minutes. Okay. Okay. You first. Yeah. No. No. no you, you first. Ladies, ladies first. first. Ladies I almost first. got away with ladies it. Ladies first. It smells like a giant Tic Tac. This is very refreshing, yeah? It's strangely refreshing. When I first smelled it, I thought I was going to hate it because it really did smell very strong. The ice helps. The water helps. Um, this is a summer drink, okay, when the okay. weather is very hot. It is. I can, I can get completely how refreshing that would be on a hot day. You don't drink that in winter time. Yeah, it's good. He knows what he's doing, so he always starts with his nose. It's very refreshing, yeah. It is refreshing. It is. It is. It's, it's surprisingly refreshing. Yeah. Are you going to try some, Antoine? Of course I am. <laughs> this is a summer drink outside. You have a barbecue. You have friends over. In the summer, it's hot. A lot of people are going to be asking for that. Ah, yeah, it's very refreshing. So let me tell you something about this drink. Because this drink is particularly dangerous because you have two of these, you're all happy, you're sitting at the bar and then you gotta get up <laughs> to go do something and you realize that your legs are gone. This is very potent alcohol, but it's so refreshing. I like it. So this is the first one, this is a Kia. And the Kia, this is an iconic aperitif in France. This is only a syrup and white wine. Black currant syrup with white wine. Exactly. So this is white wine from where? Burgundy? Burgundy, traditionally. Okay. Yeah, you can use any white wine, but traditionally, this is a Burgundy white wine. And does the Kier come from Burgundy too? Or it's yeah. just, okay. Yes, this come from also, yeah. This is from Dijon, <laughs> Dijon okay. region. So we're gonna start with the Kier Bon Blanc. Funny because it tastes not like a white wine and not like a red wine, but somewhere in the middle, like the, the red fruit together with the white wine. It's, um, it tastes like dangerous fruit punch. You see the color. This one's very good. Very sweet, very good. The ladies prefer the Kiawaiyan most of the time. You want some? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's very sweet. It's white wine with sweetness added to it. Oftentimes, people will start with this drink in France because it's easy to drink. It's just sweet, it's just the sweet white wine. Then you have almost the same concept, but with champagne. So this is okay. we call it here royal. So it's improving as we go closer to me. Yeah, exactly. And I think I might like it better because I prefer champagne to white wine. <laughs> sure. For me, it's sweet, you know, like it, it's a red currant syrup, so it has a, a rich, you know, like a, 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 I don't want to say a strong flavor, but it's like a, a deep red fruit flavor to it, which is why I think it's a little bit like a wine punch or a champagne punch, because you can really taste the red fruit that's in there. And it's nice, I, I wouldn't turn it down for sure, but I think I prefer it without. Sometimes when you have a uh, white wine too young or uh, champagne too young, it's a little bit bitter. That's why we pour some black currant syrup to make it sweet. Do you put it in cheap champagne? Yeah. So in affordable bottles of champagne, we dress it up with a little red fruit. Yeah. So now I got it. This one is for drinking alone with it's good, and this one is for your brunch. Skip the orange juice. Add the red currants, 
Right, let me try. Front. Okay, turn. there you go. So great for an aperitif or cocktail reception, dresses up your champagne. Again, a little too sweet for my taste, but it's decent. Salty. And this is just champagne, the king of the wine. Merci. Champagne, okay. C'est pour moi. So this is the one I've been waiting for because this is my go-to. When they ask me in a restaurant, what would you like to drink? Voulez-vous un aperitif pour commencer? J'ai dit oui, champagne. That'll do. You guys have the rest and I'll stick with this. That's elegance. I was with Vincent the first time they offered me champagne with my pizza and ever since then, forget it. I have champagne with everything. Everything. All oh, day. Yeah. You know what I love? In the Christmas market in Paris, you get champagne with oyster. In yeah, the Christmas oh, yeah. market. This is oh yeah, oh, for yeah. you it's normal. For oh, me, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's special. Oyster and champagne, for what else? What else? <laughs> I'll share. This is really good. That's a great aperitif. When you're here in France, if you like champagne, every day ask for champagne. Because you're in France. If it's a Monday, celebrate Monday. Well, a glass of rosé, this is, uh, everybody knows the white wine, a glass of Chardonnay, everybody knows the champagne, the king of the, of the, of the wines, everybody knows the red wine. But in the south of France, mm -hmm. we do have, especially in the summertime, when it's out the rosé. It's pleasant. It's not sweet, it's definitely dry. It's very easy to drink. It is refreshing. This one is very tasty, uh, a lot of flavor. This is very, very good wine, and this is very, very good quality uh, pink wine. Oh yeah. I mean, we've been drinking for a while now, <laughs> so my taste buds are a little altered, I will say. This is so easy to drink. Yeah, it's very pleasant. Next time you're in Paris, if you want to have a guide to take you around to taste some amazing food, Vincent has a food tour in Saint-Germain and in Montmartre. He also has a wine tasting experience near the Eiffel Tower. There's a link in the description below. Just check it out. I'm telling you, you're gonna have an amazing time. Now, back to the video. So this apple cider, it's just sparkling apple juice. I always think about it like it tastes like beer. This one doesn't smell like beer, but it's the thing, they, they have this with crepes, they have it with uh, desserts and uh, different sweet things. And I'm willing to try it, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> so, I can tell you that if you want to try an apple cider, this is a good brand because this one isn't terrible. It's sparkling apple juice and it's, um, it's a tart apple. Yeah, you're just right. It's uh, sparkling apple juice. That's it. With a little bit of alcohol. This is a good one. Yeah, it's basically sparkling apple juice with a little bit of alcohol. This was my introduction to alcohol when I was a kid. We used to go to Brittany in summer camp. Cider is from uh, Brittany in Normandy uh, area. Um, and this is the first alcohol I ever tried when I was three years old. <laughs> that explains everything. Now I, now I probably was, uh, I don't know, like 10 years old, eight, 10 years old. You know, I mean, this is 4%, but a lot of them is like two to 3% alcohol. It's not very, you can drink this all day long. It's good, I like it. It's a good drink to try here. So I want to try the pear one now. Oh, yeah. The pear cider, it's a lot lighter. Yeah, two and a half of alcohol. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God, there's only two and a half percent alcohol in this one. Let's take a sip. That one's nice. It is very nice. This one has really fine bubbles, like... Um, champagne, maybe? Pear champagne, only it's not uh, champagne and it's, it's made with champagne. pears. But it's, um, it's very easy to drink. Like, yeah. I think it, this one is a very refreshing one. Hey, this so. is very refreshing. I just noticed something. I have a permanent smile. <laughs> And then, <laughs> it's gonna get better. I could get me ordering this one if a if a restaurant had the pear flavor. I could I could order that to enjoy with the meal. Oh yeah, it's very refreshing to me. It is very refreshing. It tastes like a pear juice, it's sparkling like pear juice. Pear champagne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but champagne is twelve degrees. Yeah. 
Um, this one is only two. That's okay, I can drink more. <laughs> oh yes, that's very good. So very low alcohol. I mean, the closest thing as they were saying is like champagne with pears. So yeah, I think champagne, fine bubbles, uh, pear flavor, very low alcohol. This with cheese would be amazing. This is perfect. I like it. Cheers. You guys are gonna kill me. It smells really good. Oh yeah. This is called titonche, and it is basically a French rum mixed with sugar and lemon. And I think she said that it's, a, it's the whole sugar, so it smells a little bit molasses, but not really molasses. And it has, she said, a little bit of anise flavor in the sugar. I think this is a winter drink. It's not one of those summer drinks we tried earlier. <laughs> I could probably light a light a torch right now. Um, my lips were immediately warm, and um, that's got some kick. <laughs> that one kicks like a mule, and uh, I'm gonna pass it over here. Yeah, sure. I think this is something you drink by the fire in the in the middle of winter. <laughs> it's not just me. <laughs> it's very strong. I think I got drunk just smelling it. <laughs> but I like it. So, honey, you're in charge. If you have some microbe, you know, they're just dead. <laughs> it'll, it'll kill bacteria. It's a party drink. It's a drink by the beach. It's a drink outside. It's a drink. It's a summer drink. And I would say the closest thing is the equivalent of the mojito, but French style. There's no, it's just rum and lime and a little sugar. That will keep you warm. If you're here in the winter and you're a little cold. You guys keep saying it's a summer drink. I cannot imagine drinking that in the summer. I want to do one sip because I have to keep on filming this video <laughs> and I'm feeling a little tipsy right now. So people ask us all the time, what is this thing called the apparel spritz? That is an apparel spritz. And technically it is an Italian drink made with Prosecco mixed together with some liqueur that's a botanical mix and a little bit of an orange flavor to it. And even though it's Italian, they drink it here often. So this is the kind of drink that you would order before dinner. This is a perfect example of an apero because people would just have that sitting in a cafe, people watching, waiting for a meal. So I've never actually had one. So here goes my first apero spritz. Yeah. You like it? I still prefer champagne. <laughs> but it's not bad. This, it's very refreshing. It's, very it's refreshing. light. It's light, it's orange, it's fruity, but not the, the red fruit like we had with the Kir earlier. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I don't drink that much of this uh, drink, but my daughter, she loved that. Yeah? Yeah, I have some at home just for her. So you would have it in a restaurant, in a bar, or at home? It's very refreshing. It is? Yeah. This is a summertime drink, definitely. The only thing missing is a little umbrella. Yeah, it's got a little bitter edge to it. Uh, orange drink, definitely very refreshing. You're on a terrace in Paris, summertime, it's nice and warm. You have an apérol spritz and everything is good. Decent. So I've heard about absinthe and I wanted to try absinthe, even though it's pretty crazy powerful alcohol. It was forbidden for many years because they said it made people go crazy. But we're gonna find out what it tastes like and what the deal is with absinthe these days. So this is absinthe. Can I smell it before you put ice in it? I was just gonna drop it in and pull it out. <laughs> Holy moly. You can put that in a tractor and it won't, it won't move. Pour a little bit on there. That's the way they used to drip it. Do it gently, yeah? <laughs> Are you okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. The crazy thing is, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is... I like licorice. This is licorice. Very, um, the sugar makes it sweet like a candied licorice, but that is a very, very strong alcohol licorice. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no,
<laughs> well, the, the, the flavor is very good. The flavor is excellent. And with the sugar, it's very nice. Yeah. But this is powerful, at 68 degrees, yeah? I like it. Yeah. This might be a problem. <laughs> This, this is definitely a problem. Do you want Give some? That, yeah, I'm gonna try. You're gonna it. have a spoon with sugar. All right, I'm going for it. Wow, that is hot. Wow, but that alcohol is—I've never had that in my life. Better with sugar. Yeah. Like when it without the sugar, it's really, really strong. Like it just tastes like very strong flavored licorice uh, alcohol. But with the sugar, I, I very much like it actually. Way more than I was expecting to. I was curious, and now I'm actually a fan. And another thing that you want to try when you're in France is a beer. I mean, when you come to Paris, don't order a Heineken. It would be criminal because we have a lot of amazing beers from Belgium, and France. From France. From yeah, France. from France. Amazing beer. And then what we ordered actually is a pale ale from called La Parisienne. So it's a French beer. It's a lager beer. After the Abbasid, it tastes like water. Oh, yeah. It's literally water. Yeah. For 15, 20 years now, we have a lot of young people in France. They open a, bra a new brasserie. Yeah. We have new beer everywhere in France. Hmm. This one's very good. Yeah, it'll taste like water after... After, after the Abbasin, it just yeah. literally tastes like yeah. water. This Parisian beer is definitely very good. Yeah, Pale it's ale. good beer. Mm. Pale ale. Very good. Yeah, that smells really nice. I don't normally drink like brandy or a whiskey or a scotch or something sipping like that. It smells very good. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, this isn't... <laughs> Stop it. So, Calvados is not the kind of drink you would normally take as an apero. The people who would go in and have a Calvados in the evening before a meal are probably people who are happy drinking all day. This is something that you would have more after the meal, like an after-dinner drink. Maybe with a cigar, maybe just, you know, sipping yeah. at the coffee portion of the dinner. Like cognac. Yeah, this a, a cognac. it's like a cognac. Cognac, Apple, armagnac. cognac, armagnac, yeah. exactly. But I think it's important to introduce the Calvados here because it is so classic and so typically French. Oh, yeah. That um, it deserves to be mentioned here. It's not nearly as strong as the peak punch rum. And remember that the Normandy people mm -hmm. during the Second World War, mm -hmm. when the American and English and all the alias mm -hmm. came in France, mm -hmm. all the Normandy people welcome all the guys with no, with Calvados, and they was very happy about that. You know? <laughs> oh, this one smells very good. It's it's a very nice Calvados. Mm. Actually, I was celebrating my birthday this weekend, and I had a Calvados with a cigar. If you're a cigar aficionado and you like a little bit of liquor, Calvados and a cigar is next level. That's a very smooth alcohol. Tiponche is too strong for me, but that is perfect. And uh, the flavor of apple comes out. It's an apple liquor. It's really delicious. If you like what you saw in this video, next I would watch this one about a food tour we did in Montmartre.